Hello and welcome to the EEPROM 9 where we are looking at the Electronica MK52. And no, it's not Mark because it's Russian. So we have two units. Why two units? Because I broke one when trying to um, replace the dodgy CRT, not CRT, VFD because a lot of these shipped with dodgy C VFDs that are very, very dim. And that is less than ideal. And these are a reverse Polish notation calculator. What the hell does that mean? Well, I'll demonstrate with one which actually has an English keyboard, which is also a new acquisition. So reverse Polish notation means there is no equals. And in fact, it's actually the equivalent of when you'd write it out longhand on a piece of paper. So if you want to do 23 times, I don't know, 6, you do 23, enter it, then you do 6, and then you times it with your operator. And it's 138, and that very much works pretty much on the board. Whether you want to square root it, you don't even have to enter in this case, you just hit the function key to square root, and apparently the square root is 2.23606797. So yeah, that's basically that. There are plenty of videos that go into detail on this to absolute crazy extents. This, in my opinion, is a far better method of entry system, of algebraic um, systems, and I wish I'd known about that years ago. So, unless you've got a calculator that can, um, you can basically enter the sums are as they're written down on the piece of paper. Reverse Polish notation for the win. Also, this thing, because it's a financial calculator, does percentages correctly. There's none of that crap you have to do with one of these. You know, standard four function algebraic entry. There is, it's literally, um, okay, so what's, I don't know, 50% of 5,000, so you do 5,000, enter, 50, and then you hit percent. Oh look, it's 2,500! Hey! And yeah, that works for more complex calculations. It's, it's literally that easy. Reverse Polish notation for the win. The Rusk has got it right there. Shame it's not really um, a commonplace. In other news, I also fixed my Casso PB700 again for the sixth time. Those old leaky batteries that were in it before I got it, um, yeah, they still haunt it to this day. <coughs> so, back to the subject. I've put a printout of the um, keyboard matrix in English on the top there so I can actually use this. This is actually quite a nice calculator. We got off on. We've got a free position switch for clear, write, and read. Because this is the first and maybe only calculator to ever have non -vo actual non-volatile memory in the form of an EEPROM. And bearing in mind these originate from the eighties, I didn't even realise EEPROMs existed in the eighties. I thought you were just stuck with EEPROMs. But hey, I was wrong. So you've got clear, write, read. That's the function for the ROM chip. I've just got it on read. Then you've got rad, grad, degrees. These are scientific function doohickeys for the calculator. Um, I just know these two on some of the scientific functions give you wrong answers. DEG gives you the correct answers. And you've got data or program if you're programming it or using it in data mode. I'm not 100% sure exactly what data mode's for, but it's the one I leave it on by default. And then, of course, the uh, keyboard is in the beautiful Cyrillic. I do love the look of the Cyrillic alphabet. But we are not going to take this one apart, although I have taken it apart, and it looks exactly the same as the one I'm going to take apart and show you. So, yes, we're learning about reverse Polish notation and all that, and how it's superior. You know, it's not PC Master Race, it's reverse Polish notation Master Race. I know, I, you know. You know what the irony is? I'm absolutely shit at maths. 
this one also, yeah, these also come in like a billion varieties of colours as well, which is awesome. I guess it was just whatever colour was um, cheap that day, something like that. And I got them, I didn't get the uh, manuals and that, I, I did get the manual, I didn't get the charger, but I got the box, which is nice, got a picture of the calculator on it. And with it comes two manuals in Russian, so I can't read them. But I should check to see if these are online. If they're not, I will scan them both on because these deserve to be online. If they're not online, I'm going to double check that at some point because that's going to be quite a project. I can use my Whizbang super expensive scanner that I spent way too much money on. And the thing I love the most is... For a calculator, you get an actual schematic, which is the one thing I can read in this package. I can't read the Cyrillic stuff here, the notes, but I can read the rest of this and it makes all sense. Oh god, yeah, there we go, it goes like that. Yeah. And then you've got um, another one which has a schematic of the power supply, which is Basically a 7805 voltage re linear regulator, you could uh, easily replicate that. And then there's this little addendum, which I'm going to put on the screen so you can pause and read and translate or do whatever you want to do with those. But I should check to see if these are all on the internet, and if they're not... These are going to have to be scanned on the internet, and there's no way to do it, do it but the slow way, unfortunately. And I just love how it comes with the manuals. And look, we're set over seven minutes in, and we haven't even got the back cover off, because there's just that interesting stuff. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to give you much information on the chips, because they're not labelled. But they are quite interesting in their construction techniques. Dave Jones has actually done a like mini teardown of one of these in a um, mailbag two minute teardown. It was rather interesting. And oh yeah, the build quality complies with that beautiful, janky, Soviet, creaky, horrible, cheap, nasty plastic. You know, these are, there's the two expansion bays. Uh, some models actually have this populated with a connector. Most models don't, from my experience. So it's just two screws in the bottom, at the top, and hey presto, you're into the board. And you can see he's a very, very, very pretty circuit board. Just move the keyboard out of the way. Make sure you guys are in front. There's nothing in the back apart from wires going to the battery connector. That is about right. So here's our EEPROM that does the main um, storage. <coughs> Almost looks like an EEPROM with that window. Some variants don't actually have the little um, window bit. This connects over to the really janky, nasty keyboard. Under here, this resistor network. We have one of the main ICs that drives this thing. In fact, it's actually li linked to these resistor networks. Then, then under here we have another IC here, which is a um, K five six one. The weird, like, squarish N thing. I hope you can see that. Uh, and then A7, uh, built in 93. These ones are 90s examples of what is essentially an 80s calculator. This is the um, high voltage power supply module for the um, VFD. You got another chip here, two chips here, which are something to do with keypad entry because, well, I accidentally knocked these off and keypad entry don't work no more. You got two more chips here. And another big main IC here, which looks to be VFD driver from the, um, how it's hooked up. And then just like a random, <laughs> almost homemade, a home board there. 
So that's all quite interesting. Shall we remove this board and have a look at the keyboard? I think we should. Now, hopefully the camera doesn't overheat because it's a Sony! And Sony don't make cameras like they used to back in the 90s, that's for sure. They used to make the best video cameras back in the 90s, and we're, yeah. They still have that market, somehow. <laughs> Sony aren't what they used to be of the uh, 90s, 80s and 70s and 60s and whatnot. They're a bit shit. Right, will the board come out? Because I haven't actually taken out those two screws before, so... no, oh, no, there's a third one hiding there. I bet you're staring at screaming at me. You missed a screw! You missed a screw, you dumbass! As usual, in um, Soviet style, they are flathead screws, although... The uh, main ones that go in the back are Phillips head screws, so yeah, one of the rare cases of uh, Soviet stuff using Phillips head screws. Here we go, the board's loose now. Wee, out he comes. Oh god, I want to be careful I don't lose those. What are you stuck on? Oh shit. <laughs> ah, that, there we go. Wee, over we go, and we can see the vacuum fluorescent display in all its glory and it is a beauty it's a shame it's a faulty one really but you know and sometimes that just happens and here we have the keypad matrix now this thing feels absolutely goddamn terrible it's like the buttons all like don't stay in place and there's literally no tactile feedback whatsoever it's like it's like a ZX81 equivalent terribleness. It's pretty horrible keyboard. So let's see if we can extract him, because I'm quite curious to see exactly what's under it. I suspect it uses foam to spring the buttons back on. Well, foam that's this old has no doubt perished. I'm not too worried if I uh, damage this one which is why this one is being used as a sort of sacrificial lamb. And yes, I was damn right. We have it on a membrane, and we have foam that is um, very much on the path to disintegration. So yeah, I was bang on correct in my suspicion there, because that is exactly how it is. It's why the feeling is so terrible. And it bangs straight onto a membrane, much like a ZX81. So, yeah, and there's whatever that thing is. Um, it doesn't look like a mummified insect. So, yeah, that is a teardown of an Electronica MK52. A very fascinating and interesting bit of vintage calculator and computer technology, because this thing is actually programmable. And just look at that module. Just as a warning, these capacitors are known to uh, be quite failure prone. Now, interestingly, these have been replaced in their time. So I've certainly gone in there and replaced them with modern equivalents. My other one doesn't have that, but it doesn't need it. And the camera's about to overheat because, well, it's a Sony and Sony is shit. But, you know. So, thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoyed. And... We should have more, we definitely have more vintage calculator videos on the way. And if you don't like that, tough shit. Because I like vintage calculators and I will continue to do them. Do them. Giggity. Night, night all. Also, what's that horrible buzzing pitch noise?